name is Jessica Lord, and I work at GitHub, and I am a developer and designer slash maybe enthusiast, too. Um, a nice thing about GitHub is you get to kind of define what you are and what you do. So actually, every time someone asks me that, I think I give a different <laughs> answer depending on what I'm working on that week. But, but mostly in the area of open source, open government, and design development. I went to school for architecture and had wanted to do architecture for forever, so I went to college for that. And then I worked as an architect, and then I started working in urban design because I wanted to work more at city scale and work more for people. But I've also always loved technology. But after a while, I got really frustrated with the state of technology in government and and hitting a lot, my, hitting my head on a lot of walls. And so my third year there um, was the first year of Code for America. And Code for America, one of the first cities was Boston. So I was working at City Hall and the Code for America fellows were at Boston City Hall. And that's how I got to know about the Code for America fellowship program. And um, at the beginning of that year, I, I remember thinking, that's a really cool mission, but I don't wanna be on the computer all day. I'm like, I'm a creative. Um, but by the end of the summer, I was just sort of at my wit's end of like knowing that I needed people to learn from. I wanted to feel like I was growing and helping build things, which just wasn't happening in city government. So as a Code for America fellow, I worked with the city of Macon, Georgia, which is actually where I'm from. It's a pretty small area. It's like middle Georgia. Um, and I worked to build a budget visualization tool for the city, and I wanted to build it kind of something I took from working in city government was the lack of making use of existing open source or free technologies, things that we take for granted, like the fact that a blog spot or Tumblr lets you create a blog for free instantly. It allows like for searching and tagging and all of this kind of stuff. Like those are really useful tools that government just isn't taking a part of. So I wanted the department to be able to manage their own website and budget people know spreadsheets. Um, so I set out and I built this little JavaScript library called sheetsy.js and it's about seeing spreadsheets. Um, and so it's a way to hook Google Spreadsheets to a website. So you use a Google Spreadsheet as your database. That way it's really easy to share, it's really easy to use, and you can do visualizations and mapping and charting and all of that just from a Google Spreadsheet. And so during my Code for America year was the first I had ever learned really about open source and GitHub and it completely changed how I saw not only how developers function, but how a place like government can function in the same capacity as open source. And so the things that GitHub does for developers, it can do for government. It makes it so that decisions can be traceable, that things can be stored and shared really easily and, and open to the public and made accessible. And so a lot of governments are getting on GitHub for that. Um, they're putting data on, on GitHub, they're putting apps, they're even writing themselves, like in their IT departments are sharing on GitHub because governments and you know city governments and even national governments, they're all trying to be the best government for the people, right? So a lot of their problems overlap and there's so much potential for sharing and that is what GitHub is really good at. When I joined GitHub, they knew that I had a passion for government technology and they had also just hired another guy, Ben Balter, who has a passion for government and technology. And so we hit the ground running and built government.github.com. And what we wanted to do was like create a place where governments could be exposed to each other and know who else was on GitHub. Because when you sign up for GitHub, there's no, there's no checkbox to identify your interests or what you do, right? So if you are a government and you get on GitHub, how do you know what other governments are, are on GitHub and what they're doing on GitHub? And so building government.github.com was about sort of bringing all that stuff together and bringing it to the surface. So when I set out to learn to code, which I think when I began my Code for America Fellowship, I really didn't even understand the scope of what I was getting into. I was like, I thought that I would feel really good if I learned what this thing JavaScript was because it seemed useful on the internet. And that was honestly like as much as I understood at the time. And for the few first months of my fellowship, when I would talk about what my project was gonna be, I always felt like I still had a question mark, like I would say it 
And in my mind was a question mark of like, I think this is a thing that JavaScript does. And I just started really small, right? Like I had the idea of what I was gonna build that was this big. And then I said, all right, what is the very first thing that has to be built? And then let me learn how to build that one thing, right? And as soon as I built that, I say, what has to be built next? And then I would learn how to do that. And I, I learned kind of in real time, knowing that I was committed to delivering this thing at the end of the year. And um, I don't know if that method is maybe not for everyone, but that's, that's how it's happened for me. And that I just, I've recently done that again, where um, at GitHub, I'm gonna start hosting an event to teach people Git and GitHub. And I wanted there to be this sort of workshop app um, for doing that. And so I started building it knowing I was gonna have to tackle a lot of stuff I didn't know yet how to do and the events next week. And so I've totally spent the last few weeks like realizing I'm doing that thing again where I am learning because I said I was gonna build this thing. But it's also, uh, for better or worse, it's a great motivator, right? I think another thing when someone's learning to program, if you don't have that end goal that you, you legitimately want in the world, you're not gonna keep doing the lessons. You're not gonna keep you know, hitting your head on the wall and you're not gonna keep going because it is frustrating, it is hard. You're gonna spend an hour and realize that you had a comma in the wrong place. And if you're not chasing something that you want to exist, like why else would you keep doing that to yourself? And so I, I think it's really important to, to figure out what it is that you want to, be, to exist in the world and use that to sort of keep you going. I love that you can want something to exist and then it can exist, which you know is very different than in government when, like I'm still, I see things that are, I've been out of Boston now for two years, but I get, I've got pinged on Twitter for stuff that I was working on that's now coming to fruition from when I was at the city, you know, and I'm like, wow. Um, and so I love the quick turnaround. Um, I love the open nature of programming, at least. I'm mostly in open source programming, so um, I, love, I love that. I love that people are always willing to share what they're doing. And coming from a more design, traditional design, like architecture background, I was sort of floored by the when you go to conferences for development. They're, they're showing you the code. They're like, I had this problem. Here are the 10 things, 10 ways I tried to solve it, and here's the one that worked. Here's the code. You know, and that's, it blew my mind that people were just so open about it. Um, and I love that you didn't have to be 50 years old at, to be considered successful or have a valuable opinion and, um, and that it was really about sharing ideas. And so I love that about the open source development community.